What's up guys, it's Kerry 3 Print and Technology for this video. I'm going to be assembling the Prism Mini, but this isn't an ordinary Prism Mini. It's one I'm building from scratch or custom built. I've sourced all these parts from outside Prism's website. So some parts are from China, some parts from the United States, some parts maybe from Canada, so there's different parts coming from different sources. And yeah, I thought it'd be a fun build to do, especially since there's not much, much instructions going on online with these person made three printers right now. So this is gonna be a part one of maybe two or three part series, just because of the amount of time length for this video, they don't make it too long. But anyways, but anyways, let's get into the build. Okay, so here is all of the three prime parts needed for the Prism Mini. I'm going to try to use all of these parts with the frame parts. I may replace the hot end and other pieces, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so here is the box with all of the frame and modern parts. I ordered, ordered them in blue. I think the colors were black, blue, red, or orange. And it's got like three extrusions, about six rods, and then the base plate. So I'll get this unboxed and we'll start trying to figure out how to assemble it by pictures. So we're going to start with the Y-axis carriage. This comes in really two carriages, the Z-axis and Y-axis. So we're going to start with the Y-axis. And we got three extrusions, so I think it's these two extrusions the same size, and then that one's the Z axis. And we're going to try to connect the plates to them. But here is the sensor I got to go on. It's pictures like this. Okay, so we, okay, so we got some of the frames assembled. The two front plates with the extrusion rods. Looks like the extrusion pieces uses a M5 by 16 R screw, two on each end, so eight in total. And then the block nuts that was used on the MK3S's power supply seem to be too small, or these rods seem to be too big for them, so they fall out easily. So after looking to find something a little bit more bigger than that to use. Okay, so we got six rods. Two long ones and four short short ones. Some of the long ones are the Z axis. Then two of these are Y axis and the other two are X axis. So loosen these up and try these into place in these four holes, which seem to go on top. Okay, so on the Z axis, which we got three screws on this metal plate to the control box. One of a Square nut, another square nut, and another square nut. Looks like three screws on this plate together. And then this is for the cover piece. So I think these are probably M310 screws and then maybe M320. I'll find something that fits. So we've we got M310 screw, four square washers, and three M320s. And with this piece, I'd use a rubber mount to get these rods into place and screw it one in completely and just try to get as much as I can. But that's so far on the X axis, Y axis. So it looks like it's come back M3 30 screw instead. M3 twin screw does not fit. Alright, next we're going to take two M3. Two M5 by 16 R screws and the two longer rods and this three print piece and attempt to put these rods in these holes and connect the Z axis to it. So here is the 
the axis part three assembled. So the two rods in place with the print part on top and the Z extrusion rod. Okay, so I put the majority of the three print parts onto the right pieces, I think. Still gotta figure out the correct screw sizes for all of them, like the length. But now I've got some sort of frame to go by. We got the boot plate with this belt piece, the X axis, which somehow has two extrude mirrors on it and it works. The Z axis and the Y axis. The next would be to get the build plate and mount it onto the Y axis and then finish add a few more hardware components to the Z and X axis and I'll do all that figuring out the correct screw hole screw dimensions. So here is it somewhat right out. Then we'll separate the Z and X axis and like pre buying it. So that would be easier to ship if I decide to go with a pre built one. And also easier to write out some instructions for us to do each separate axis similar to the MK3. But probably X axis, well, all of the axes, figuring out screw dimensions, X axis, work on the hot end mount. Y axis attaching the build plate and Z axis getting the metal plate more stable with right screws and start looking at the control box electronic stuff. Okay, so the next step on the Y axis frame we had the three U boats. These are the same ones used in the MK33 printers and then the Y carriage, we have the front of the printer of the Prusa logo. So the single bearing goes on the right side, and the two bearings go on the left side. And then I also add four rubber feet. I think Prusa uses something similar, but this is what I have, so we'll use that. Okay, so I got the 6238 bearing and a M318 screw and a narrow nut that is similar to how the MP3 is set up and the bearing is the same one rested on the pretty many spare parts on the website so about to see if this all fits together also this side looks like it's going to be the nut side and this side will be the side the screw goes in on so that is because of the way it's shaped Okay, so I priced the M318 with the M320. Does it really make a big of a difference? Since the end won't be poking out any, anyways, but it's easier to fit. Okay, so now we got the bearings that came in. We got the Mizumi LMU. I believe this is a 10. And Mizumi LMU 8 bearings. This is different compared to the MK3 because this Z axis rod is a bigger size, so that's why we need the different size bearings. So we'll put them on and we'll see where we're at. So it looks like it takes four bearings for this one, three for the bed, and two for the rods for the hot end carriage. So we got nine bearings all together. Okay, so where I want to remove the waxes is I'll attach the U boats and bearings on the Y carriage plate. And then strip this over the rods while it's disassembled and then screw it all back into place. Okay, so all the bearings are on, got the Y axis, X axis, and Z axis. Then I add this to it too. On the waxes, I'm going to replace these two screws with something a little bit longer because I don't like, like the way it's fit on here. It's fitted. I'm probably going to replace the M310 screws with like an M320 or 18 just so I can get a hex nut over it. Okay, so that got the M310 screw got replaced with an M314 which gave me enough room to put a hex nut onto it. 
that way the screw will, won't fall out because this bed does move and uh, vibrate the screw okay so on the press the mini kit I replaced the short nuts with the appropriate nut appropriate make short nuts the ones that installed at the beginning wasn't the correct size and these match the extrusion almost spot on I think they may be a little bit shorter than the stock preset ones but these are do they are M3 screw size so since Prusa redid the rub set around I think they have removed the troubleshooting part of the Prusa main instructions so it's not really right to go on now but I believe it was a M318 with a hex nut for the wax belt screw right here so we'll try this first see if it fits so here's what it looks like I'm just going to get an angle so it does fit okay so the last step for this video we're going to be test fitting all the axes together and then I'll pick up here in part part two of the series which will be installed more of the major components like I said at the beginning of the video at the beginning of the video but anyways we've got all three axes Y, X and Z and that's with the control board on it we also have the mini display mount so first off we're going to take the z-axis top off and put the x-axis on Also, all these parts are from 3 prime if anybody's interested. So that piece is on. Got a few issues with the screw sizes, so I'll have to address that in the next episode. But you can see the fit. I believe Presa uses the one single bearing, but this is two bearings, but it should still fit. Depending on how tight we can get the grip of the three print parts. So the next step will be to attach this X and Z axis to the Y axis. To do that we got an M340 screw and an M320 screw. The 20 screw is going to go right here for now. The 20 screw is going to go right here and then the 40 screw is going to go through the side. And we're using the M320 for the display since I don't have the M312 screws yet. The first piece is on, you have to screw it through this hole right here. Then the second one to go through here, but it seems like it's stuck. So I'm going to see if I can get this piece unstuck. Okay, so I went ahead and inserted the other two screws on the these two axes. Again, I don't have the right screw length, so I'm going to have using that for now. 
and they have the screw in this slot right here. It's kind of very difficult to assemble, but it works, I guess. And then I tried to screw the M twin screw right here, but it seems to seems I'm missing a nut or missed a step or something. I think that preset already installed some sort of square nut behind this piece. So I'm going to have to go work into that more. But other than that, that concludes this episode part one for the preset mini. So that's going to wrap up the part one build. The part two build will probably be in a few weeks or so, depending on when the rest of the parts get here. So it went from nothing to a somewhat assembled frame. All the extrusions, rods, the print parts are connected and, it's, and it resembles the 3 printer. The next step is, the next step will be to start getting more of the component pieces like hot end, board, display, power supply, bows and tube type stuff. But anyways, if I could be on today's videos first, make sure to click subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.